We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are in bondage, bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rapidum, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirst there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go ahead of the people. And take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take your hand, the staff, with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out, so the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read the psalm responsively. Come, let us sing to the Lord. 
Let us shout for the joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, and as on the day at Massa in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years I loathed that generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger. They shall never come to my rest. A reading from Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the time Jesus died for the ungodly, indeed rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might dare to die. But God proves his love for us in in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But much more then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, We even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You were right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, 
I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? And the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Academic tests are supposed to determine our knowledge levels, but their accuracy needs to be proved. So they should be one of many resources. It has been nice to hear that fewer and fewer colleges are using tests like the SATs, GREs, and ACTs to determine solely what a student knows scholastically, and whether they are good enough to be a student at their institution. These tests, like many others, are biased and may not show a student's true ability. It's been a long time ago, but I remember when I took those tests. I was so filled with anxiety then I am sure it was the reason I could not complete some sections on time. As I would stop to check and see if I was still breathing and trying to tell myself to calm down. We know as Lutherans we do not, we are not. We do know as Lutherans that we are not tested by God, but empowered to have faith that when things are not going too well, God is not giving us tests to show love, but by God's grace we know we are unconditionally loved. We do not need to take a test to pass to know that God is with us and loves us. In the first lesson, the Israelites asked God, is the Lord among us or not? We hear them turning the tides and testing God. God demonstrates that no test is necessary as God has always been there. 
just like the men out of Egypt. God responds to the Israelites by saving them from their plight, by giving them the nutrients needed to carry on. They learned a lesson. God calls them not to test the Almighty, but to believe that God is in their hearts during their life path. Testing God, just like tests given to us, may not provide the full spectrum. And many times we will give God a failing grade because God does not respond the way we want God to answer. The Israelites complained to God, and it seemed that they were ungrateful that God delivered them from slavery by the Egyptians. The ungrateful, forgetful Israelites have this, what have you done for us lately, Lord, attitude, provoking scorn from their perspective. But their concerns were valid. I think they are in a desert, thirsty, and need water. They're not being unreasonable. They're not trusting that God, who has a good record of delivering them before, may not do it this time and leave them stranded, dying in the desert. They're showing us a reality that makes us think. Freedom from oppression is not a guarantee of happiness or prosperity. We have seen within our own lives that our ability to withstand turmoil and not succumb to the dangers set before us does not mean we will never have such challenges again. When the faces of hunger, thirst, and other problems arise in our lives, the vision of God may seem dim, distant, or even non-existent, causing us to ask, is the Lord among us or not? When we ask the question, it not only puts God to the test, but also to the proof. That is what we are seeking, a way in which we think we can coerce God into acting or showing the providence God set before us. It is to set God up and try to force God's hand to determine whether God is present. It is a selfish behavior. Israel testing of God consists of this statement. For us to believe that God is present, God must concretely show us by making water materialize right in front of our eyes. It's to make one's belief in God contingent upon a demonstration. They attempt to turn faith into sight. This approach to God is often characteristic of us as the people of God. We certainly see this behavior in the first lesson where we force God's hand, seeking to make God act to demonstrate God's divine presence and power. Such attributes are set up to set up God for a test. We determine how God shows divine power. It places God in the role of a servant at the beck and call of us in any difficulty. Besides violating God's power, it endangers our understanding of faith. It leads to such attitudes as God did not heal or protect us because we did not have enough faith. If we had, God would have acted the way we think God should work. That is to put God to the test. Demonstrating an inappropriate confidence that God will intervene on behalf of one with enough faith. God calls us not to test God, but to believe that God is here with us in all our paths and encounters, and we will see us through the promise of everlasting life. During this Lenten season, let us be guided by God's love, knowing that God's presence is with us. By God's empowering love, our faith is sustained. 
God's people in the Exodus reminds us that God is faithful to meet our essential needs and can bear the brunt of our complaints without becoming vindictive or wrathful. Without tests, we know God is always present in our community and church, binding us together in our faith and obedience. Throughout our lives, we will experience loss, absence, pain, and suffering at all different levels. But daily through our baptism, celebrating Holy Communion, and hearing the word and preaching, teaching and study, we are brought together by God. God is faithful to us, all of us who need God desperately. We are empowered to persevere and have faith in God who will not leave us but sustain us. Like the Israelites, we may test God but we are constantly reminded that God's presence does not make such demands. God is here through the good and bad times. Because we know we are loved by God, we know that the Lord is among us and will always see us through. God continues to be the rock throughout the ages, keeping us near the cross, so we can hear what Jesus says. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of living water, send your church beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May its witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, protect from pollution or misuse all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams. Bless the work of those who dig wells and those who advocate for access to clean water, that all people and animals have enough to drink. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, open the hearts of leaders and authorities, that they hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion toward them. Bring peace to disputed lands and bring reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, or nationality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, mend the hearts of those who grieve broken relationships whether by conflict, abuse, divorce, or death. Draw near to all who are ill. We pray especially for the shut-in members of the con congregation, all on our prayer lists and ones whom we name in our hearts. Assure those questioning your presence in the midst of doubt or suffering. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, renew us in the promises of baptism. <clears throat> Join us together in worship, fellowship, and sharing your good news. Embolden us to serve others and to work for justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. God of living water, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.